President Joe Biden's poor performance in the recent debate has sent everyone into a tizzy, with many people going as far as to say he can't win in November. Let's dive into how much credibility we should grant that claim. The most common data point I hear cited when making this claim is polling, but the polling change is being drastically overstated. If you look at the 538 average, you'll see that very little has changed since the debate. In fact, polls have stayed basically the same for months now. But how much should we be relying on these polls at this point in time anyway? Many people are comparing current polls to the last election, since since the last election was between Trump and Biden, which makes sense. However, there's a big difference between this election and 2020 that people seem to gloss over, specifically regarding the polls, and that's the share of the vote going to a third party candidate. The last time we had a third party candidate polling this high was actually in 2016. Remember Gary Johnson? Don't worry, I barely do either. However, we saw that the third party share made polls this early really unpredictable in 2016. For example, on July 4th in 2016, Clinton led by 42.5 to 36.9 percent in the polls. She ended up getting 48.5 percent of the vote to Donald Trump's 46.1 percent. He overperformed July polling by almost 10 points, and she overperformed July polling by six points. Something similar happened in several swing states. In Florida, Clinton was up 49 to 44 percent. She lost the state 48 percent to 49 percent. In Michigan, she was up 50 to 38 percent. She lost 43 to 47.5. In Minnesota, she was up 49 to 40. She won 46 to 45. In Pennsylvania, she was up 48 to 42. She lost 47.5 to 40 and in Wisconsin, she was up 50 to 41%. She lost 46.5 to 47. These differences were in events that occurred between July and November and in how the third party vote broke. Remember, the third party candidate doesn't have enough support to get ballot access in every state. So the vote total they get on election day is inevitably going to far underperform their polling this early in the race. I'm not necessarily suggesting that we should expect Biden to outperform his July polls in the same way Trump did, as much as I'm saying that having this high of a third party vote share makes early polling unpredictable. However, I do think it's worth noting that Gary Johnson tended to appeal to more traditional Republican voters who were skeptical of Trump early, whereas it does seem like RFK Jr. voters are appealing to demographically more traditional Democratic voters who are skeptical of Biden. Polling isn't the only data point effective at predicting electoral outcomes, though. Alan Lichtman is an American historian who developed a model that has predicted the popular vote outcome of every election since 1984, except for 2016, using what he calls the keys to the White House, a set of 13 true false statements about the conditions of an election. I'm less concerned about the model's overall performance than I am about the individual components, though. I think they serve as an effective way to evaluate the characteristics of an election outside of just polling. Again, the model includes 13 keys. The incumbent needs to pass at least six keys for Lichtman to predict an incumbent win. They need to pass five or fewer for him to predict a loss. Otherwise, it's a toss-up. Right now, Lichtman has Biden passing eight. First, Lichtman wants the incumbent to win at least two-thirds of the total delegate count at the nominating convention. Obviously, we're currently in a contentious discussion about that, but not one that is the result of a successful primary challenge. The primary is over, and 99% of delegates are currently pledged to Biden. The incumbent has been elected in 21 of the 28 times this key has been true, and Lichtman considers it the single best predictor among the 13 keys. The second is incumbency. Biden obviously passes it here, but I do think it is an interesting wrinkle that Trump is very much like an incumbent himself since he's a former president. The next two is whether the economy is in a recession and whether real per capita economic growth growth is stronger than it was in the previous two terms. We're not in a recession, and real GDP per capita economic growth far exceeds that of the previous two terms. Therefore, this leans towards Biden passing. However, it is worth noting that a slight majority of Americans incorrectly think that the U.S. is in a recession, mostly because of inflation. The economy should be an asset for Biden, but enough Americans might blame him for inflation for it to be a liability. A big wild card could be whether the Fed lowers interest rates before the election. Next is whether the incumbent enacted any major policy policy changes. Biden has the Inflation Reduction Act, the Chips and Science Act, the American Rescue Plan, the Bipartisan Infrastructure Bill, the PACT Act, the Bipartisan Safer Communities Act, and the Respect for Marriage Act. This key has been successful 15 of the 19 times it has been true, and it's true for Biden. Next is whether there has been any widespread social unrest, which there hasn't since Trump left office, a factor in people's decisions that I think is being really underrated, considering how much social unrest there was under Trump. Next is whether the incumbent has been free of any major scandals, and Lichtman says Biden leans true here. While the debate feels like something close to a scandal now, I doubt it will when November comes around, and while the right has tried desperately to make Hunter a scandal, I don't think enough voters blame Hunter's behavior on his father for it to be true. Plus, he's being compared to Donald Trump here, who is a walking, talking scandal. He is a felon who recently tried to steal an election, after all. Lichtman's keys against Biden are his party not gaining House seats in the midterm, a third-party challenger, incumbent charisma, and military successes and failures. I think military successes and 
and failures is complicated, though. Polling numbers for Biden's handling of pretty much every conflict are underwater, but the polling for Trump's proposals are even worse, and the actual outcomes that Biden's policies are geared towards are supported by a plurality of voters. It's complicated, to say the least. Furthermore, these keys don't touch on other serious issues on voters' minds, like abortion, the Supreme Court, and Trump's attacks on democracy. All of this to say that I simply don't think anyone can say that Biden can't win this election with any legitimate certainty. We definitely can't go off of polls alone. This election is too unusual in too many ways, this environment is ripe for non-response bias, and we're simply way too far out to make that call. If you want Trump to lose in November, I think you're just way better off spending your energy on that outcome rather than spending it hand-wringing about whether Biden is the optimal candidate. Biden is far from a sure thing, but this is 2024. The only sure thing is that there are no sure things.